I had a pretty, pretty tough growing up period up until the time I was seven years old. Grew up amongst uh, uh, five or six siblings at the time. And uh, we didn't have a lot of food. We didn't have a lot of uh, uh, things that, that go along with, with daily living. We didn't have it because of the size of the family. My dad had to work three jobs uh, to support us. Uh, but at the age of seven, on the east side of Detroit, southeast Detroit, I got interested in uh, music. And why I would pick the instrument that, that, that would require you to have a long arm, I don't know. But that was the trombone. Now, as a young man growing up, um, I didn't really experience any, any, covert, any overt uh, discrimination, I would say. But covertly, once I started living and seeing things and experiencing it, I recognized what it was, see? Cass Tech High School, which I love, okay? Uh, it was like a culture shock number one coming from junior high school into a seven-story uh, building with over 2,000 uh, uh, people as, as, as pupils, students. So it was a culture shock number one. Let me, let me preface by saying uh, uh, we were a minority. The blacks were a minority at Cass at that time. Of course, I didn't look at color, never had looked at color or race uh, prior to that. I can say directly that uh, I missed two primary courses, civics and economics, which are primary to getting you into college. I wasn't even given those. I was just pushed through in my music curriculum uh, and uh, graduated, but I was short those two courses. Why would I be short those two courses if I was counseled properly? So that was one of the things I looked at. That was primarily a direct uh, me, uh, a direct racism or bigotry towards me, because no, there was no rhyme or reason why I shouldn't have had counseling f towards my graduation. My band leaders, with them, all my instructors, my band instructors, during my career, were not racist, were not bigots, because they always put me in the first chair above all my white uh, friends. You know, when I came to Motown, though, I started as a trombonist. And uh, after a year or two, I uh, graduated. I call it graduation because this was a college, okay? All right? The Motown College of Music, I call it, okay? I uh, started as a trombonist. I graduated to copying the scores of other arrangers. I got my first uh, opportunity to do an arrangement with Norman Whitfield. Some of the great songs we did were Cloud Nine, Papa Was a Rolling Stone. Papa Was a Rolling Stone won a Grammy for. Some of the other significant songs that I, I had a chance to do were like uh, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Did that both for uh, Marvin and Tammy and for Diana Ross. Also did uh, My Girl, Temptations, which uh, the history on that one is very significant. My Girl started off as a, as a regular Smokey Robinson song. He, he, he just wrote Great, great songs, but The Temptations looked at it as just being a mediocre song. So um, Smokey says he wanted to put some sweetening on top. That's what we call the top, the strings and horns. So he commissioned me to do that. And once I did that, not realizing that I was going to transform this song into something that's going to take a place in history that, that, that nothing can, can, can waver, uh, it, it turned out to be one of the greatest songs that The Temptations has. And, uh, and Otis Williams, who to this day states that if it weren't for the sweetening that I put, that me, Paul Reiser, put on that song, the song would just be a mediocre song. So it turned out to be one of the greatest songs in the, in the history of R&B pop music. The Motown sound to me is um, the miracle of these musicians coming together at that point in time, it'll never happen again in history, in life, the chemistry that these musicians uh, uh, brought to the, to the table, they were primarily jazz musicians, okay? They didn't come in here playing R&B, but Barry Gordy saw something in this group of guys. I look at the songs that were written back um, during my era, the 60s and 70s, uh, particularly what Barry Gordy found at Motown on. He founded it on a, on a statement, that, uh, on a foundation that he didn't want songs 
that would 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 uh, just lean towards a particular culture, a particular community. He wanted songs that the world would embrace. To this day, I don't see music as as a color thing, not black and white. The only thing in music is black and white are the notes in the paper. Okay, music is colorless. It's the it's the uh, it's the international language, common language. 